Hi friends of Mixology! Today we'll be looking at all the gear I use to create new ingredients. Syrups, cordials, infusions, clarified juices, foams, decorations, whatever I need for a signature cocktail. We'll divide these into a few categories, including precision, extracting and infusing flavors, straining, bottling and other stuff. Do you need all this Mixology gear to create a signature cocktail? Of course not but it does give you more options. Just like everyone should know the classic cocktails first and go from there. It's the same with the gear and you can start making cocktails with everything you already have at home. Then you build on that and almost everything I'll show you today is used for more than just mixology. Let's clear the bar and start with the basics. But first, it's cocktail time. As you could see in the intro, I used a shot glass, a teaspoon and a knife to make this delicious Negroni. But once you have a jigger, mixing glass, shaker, strainer, peeler and a bar spoon, you'll eventually want to create more than just the classic cocktails. For that, you'll need some extra gear. Again, you'll probably have some of the basics that every home or professional mixologist needs. One thing you want to make sure when creating craft ingredients and cocktails is that when you have a recipe that you're happy with, you can replicate that to a tea. So we'll start with pen and paper. Sounds very basic, right? But when working out that perfect recipe, the number one rule is write everything down. I've made the mistake of making cocktails for special events and having trouble remembering the specs after a while. So whether you're using a little notebook or even an app, make sure you write down what you're working on. If you need to adjust anything, you'll know what you did before and what small tweaks you can make. Speaking of little tweaks, to get the measurements just right, you'll need scales and measuring cups. You probably already have the classic kitchen scale, which is great for making sure your syrup is the right 1 to 1 or 2 to 1 ratio, or when you're making a reduction and you don't want to eyeball the amounts of the liquid left. These scales usually have a precise graduation of 1 gram, which is good enough when adding larger quantities. But you'll need a smaller, high precision scale for stuff like gelatin, agar agar, acids or xanthan gum or bittering agents, where a really small amount is needed. These have a smaller surface, meaning they can be more precise, usually in increments of 0.01 gram. They're not expensive and will make sure you're on point when making cocktail ingredients. When working with liquids, you'll also need measuring cups. I usually use two. One larger, one liter one is used for larger quantities and it's also great for mixing ingredients, while the smaller 100 ml measuring cup allows me more precision. When I need it, when measuring water, you can use a scale as well. But remember, only grams and milliliters, when you're trying to be precise. Sorry, America. Let's move on to the segment I'm most excited about, since I just got something brand new to help me more efficiently extract flavors. And no, it's not the juicer. It's this thing. While they say that a good knife is a chef's best friend, a quality blade is needed in mixology as well. This will make sure everything I need to cut to get to its flavors happens nice and smoothly. As some of you have pointed out in the past, my knife game wasn't up to par. So I reached out to Sharp Edge, a Slovenian company that specializes in Japanese knives and sells them worldwide. They wanted to support what we do, so they gifted me with an amazing 200mm Banka multi-purpose kitchen knife. And so this amazing handcrafted tool wouldn't be lonely, I decided to also get a smaller 120mm patty knife from the same collection. Both were beautifully wrapped in the traditional Japanese way, but now I can't wait to start using them. Thank you again to Sharp Edge. I'll leave a link to their shop in the description. And you'll of course need a place to use your knives. A nice big cutting board is the way to go. I got this one made by a friend who owns a woodworking shop. When you can, support friends and local businesses. What's next? Mortar and a pestle. Again, the same as for cooking. I use it to crush or grind the ingredients that I want to extract more flavors from by increasing their contact surface, making it easier to flavor the infusion. Or you can grind stuff, like dried lemon peels, into a fine powder and use that as a garnish. It's a helpful tool that's great to have on hand. Speaking of citrus peels, the essential oils in them have a ton of flavor. And to extract that, I like to use these two. A fine grater and a thin peeler. The aim with both 
is to peel or grate just the skin, without the white pith, which adds bitterness. That pith gives it some firmness, which is good when you place the peel as a garnish in the cocktail glass, but for infusions you want to use just the aromatic skins. Finally, the old reliable, the juicer. You need these to get the juice from fruits and vegetables that you can't just squeeze the juice out of. The juicer I'm using was a gift from my mother-in-law, who got it from her mom, so it's far from new, but it still works great and I'm proud to keep it running on a regular basis. So it goes without saying, there will be no link for this exact model in the description. On to category number 3, infusing flavors. This is where the magic starts to happen. Slightly related to the juicer is the blender. While you can use it to extract flavors by blending and then straining fruits, I usually use it when I'm adding different ingredients that I want to break down and combine with the help of fast moving blades. That is especially true with the powerful bullet style blender, which also adds more aeration and fluffiness, making it perfect for some cocktails, like the most complicated pina colada. The classic bigger blender is great for making bigger batches of cordials or other ingredients for events. Next up, heat. It's basic chemistry. Some things need heat to start getting along with each other. And if you're not using your kitchen, you'll need a portable hob or cooker. Make sure the pots and pans you use are the right kind for the hop you got. I use these for syrups, reductions, caramel, you name it. But sometimes you want full control over the temperature. That's when we turn to sous vide. That's French for under vacuum. That's because this technique uses vacuum sealed pouches, which are placed in water set at a specific temperature for a set period of time. For that reason, it's good to get a sous vide cooker with a timer. All of that gives you almost perfect reproducibility, which is what you want when you got your recipe down with no water or air going in or out of the pouch. There is no oxidation or evaporation. One thing to remember is that the plastic bags are waste, so try to clean them after use and reuse them for the next batch. And if you need to make it up to your significant other for getting yet another gadget, just make them a delicious sous vide dinner. Trust me, you'll both love it. What about alternatives? You can make infusions in a vacuum bag without the use of sous vide, but without the heat, the process will of course take longer. On the other hand, one way you can reduce plastic waste is to use mason jars or pickling jars for infusions. Again, at room temperature, this will take a bit longer, but you can use mason jars in a sous vide cooker too. Another thing these jars are useful for is fat washing. The wide opening makes it easier to get the frozen fat out afterwards. Glass containers with airtight lids are also a good alternative for infusions. While I'll mostly use small glass jars with airtight lids for storing spices, try to avoid plastic containers, especially for infusions, since they will take on the color or even the smell if you let something infuse for a longer period of time. But if you don't have a lot of time, then we want to add a lot of flavors really fast. We need a cream reaper, which I forgot at home. A cream reaper is used for rapid infusions and cocktail foams, but it also doubles as a soda siphon, depending on which cartridge you charge it with, nitrous oxide or carbon dioxide. This ISI Gourmet Whip is a great, reliable choice and the half liter is the perfect size for two cocktails. With the rapid infusion technique, liquids can be infused with aromas by forcing the liquid into the pores of the flavoric agents. Once the pressure is released, the liquid is released, but now it's packed with additional flavor. What was once a question of days can be reduced to a few minutes. With the right ingredients going into the cream whipper, you can also create a delicious stable foam to elevate your cocktail game. The CO2 cartridges come in handy when you want to carbonate the whole cocktail or flavored ingredients without the danger of having an accident, like you might encounter if you try to carbonate such liquids in a typical soda machine. Some liquids might still be okay, like unsweetened tea, but be careful. Either way, this is a cool tool for always making sure you have a fresh soda water on hand. Also, it just looks cool on the shelf, right? That's worth something too. Okay, we've infused our flavors, or we're in the middle of the clarification process. Either way, it's time to strain the liquid. The most basic tools for that are a fine mesh strainer and some sort of a clean cloth to act as an additional filter. It can be a muslin cloth, cheesecloth, a nut meal bag or even a clean kitchen towel. For smaller quantities and typically when I use Spectinex for clarification, I like to use the Chemex. It already has the perfect shape and the coffee filters 
provide a great result. After most of the liquid has passed through the filter, we can also use one of these to press out the last few drops, the potatoizer. It comes in super handy, especially if making big batches and you don't want to waste delicious liquid. The design also makes it easier to apply it a lot more pressure than you could with just your hand. Of course, don't use this when clarifying or you'll just squeeze out the liquid through the filter. After your liquid ingredient is filtered, you'll want to bottle it. So a nice variety of different size bottles is a must-have, especially when you're not going through bottles so quickly or when you're working on several different batches to perfect a recipe. But you're writing everything down so you'll know what you put in that perfect batch, right? Don't use bottles that are too big, since excess air in the bottle will make it go bad quicker. For bitters, tinctures, saline solution, orange blossom water, squid ink solution, stuff you use in tiny amounts. You'll want to have a small bottle with a pipette or a spray nozzle, depending on how you use whatever you put in the bottle. And our final category, other stuff. Let's start with the last gadget, the food dehydrator. The most obvious way to use it for cocktails is to make long-lasting dried garnishes from citrus, pineapple and other fruits. You can also make a zero-waste garnish and snack, fruit leather from the leftover raspberries or pineapple pulp. You can try all these things in an oven as well, just set it to the lowest temperature with a fan. On to something cooler. I use these coolers to make clear ice and I'd love to show you how to do it, including a little hack so you don't have to go out and buy this. But this episode is already long enough. I'll save all that for a separate episode. Lastly, the apron. A wise man once said, you look good, you feel good. And this looks amazing. It keeps me clean as I work on ingredients and it fits my style. It was custom made by a friend of the show, the talented Welta. I'll leave a link to her webpage in the description so you can check out her work. Once you dive into the world of mixology and start learning, tasting, experimenting and just having fun, your imagination will want to expand your horizons. Don't let the lack of gear hold your back. But to be fair, that Negroni made with no gear was pretty damn good, so yeah. What about your stance on mixology gear? Do you use any of this stuff to create your own ingredients and signature cocktails? Is something here on your wish list? And Am I missing something you think I really should have? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Thanks for watching and cheers! So you sure the master's grooming kit is mixology gear?